Hi, folks. This is Candy with the Candy Shop Show of the Diamond Network. Glad you could join us. I'm broadcasting August 10th from the beautiful green Ozarks in southwest Missouri. Well, we've got a lot of interesting topics for you this evening, including sundazing. So uh, let's get started. Let's uh, uh, bring in... uh, the galactics to bless us and and uh, inspire us and and if anyone gets a message, you know this is more like a roundtable discussion tonight. Um, the um, um, you know how the friends sit in a circle and and, and get a message uh, at their Quaker meetings. Uh, maybe someone will get a message that will surprise us from the Galactics, and I certainly welcome my own bird tribe in Raul Tindar. Um, We're all anxiously awaiting Christopher Stephen Jacobs to return to us on August 22nd, and uh, uh, Terry, Terry Star Ellis, was uh, announced as our guest speaker this evening. She uh, is the author of 21st century superhuman. If you're on Facebook, I recommend you uh, friend her, Carrie, C A R Y, Terra Star, that's K I R A S T A Ellis. And of course, she knows a lot about the Kesh uh, power boxes and so many things. But she's off to uh, share her uh, gems and, and, and teach folks. And she said, you know, I really kind of need to pack tonight, and can I take a rain check? And I said, sure, Carrie. I don't want to add any stress uh, to you. So um, I've just decided to ask my dear friend, Sunny Holmes, to help me. Uh, Folks might know that Sunny hosts the Diamond Network show on Tuesday evenings, and she was born in the Owaspi and Eloas community, of Massachusetts uh, over 70 years ago. And so, um, uh, welcome, Sunny. How are you? Hi, Candy. Well, I'm pleased to be able to share your show tonight. I'm doing Great. okay. Yeah. Good. I'd be happy to share about my uh, my upbringing if you'd like me to. <laughs> oh, well, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I I know that it's uh, we've shared that a few times on our our yeah. uh, YouTube channels, and, and, and those were, were great shows. Um, but listen, why don't we all take a deep breath and, and, mm. and calm down, whether, uh, you know, and if you're listening later on YouTube, just, just slow down for a moment here. And, and Sunny, would you affirm our law of one? Mm. I'd be more than pleased. We are all one. And when one is harmed, all are harmed. And when one is helped, all are helped. Therefore, in the name of who I am, and I am one with all there is, I ask that only that which is of the highest good of all happen here and now and throughout all time and space. I give thanks that this be done, and so it is. So be it. So be it. So be it. Oh, that feels wonderful. (laughs) Uh, listen, I've, I've invited quite a few of our Owaspi, uh friends to join us tonight, and I want to kind of do a short reading from uh, the Owaspi, which is the also called the UFO Bible, uh, as advertised in Fate Magazine for 50 years. It was channeled in 1881, and 100 years later, the Law of One was channeled, 
the five volumes from the raw. Um, the raw had a, a, a lot to do with with helping prepare the awaspi as the first uh, lifting of the veil to reveal some of the creator's magic and plans for Earth and planets that find themselves periodically in this part of the universe. It's called the uh, Ark of Cosmon, and Earth entered the Ark of Cosmon in 1848. Now, each Ark period lasts around 3,000 years, and the Awaspi, just like lots of websites are talking about uh, this is the end of a of a of a big cycle, uh, you know, twenty four to twenty six years, thousand year cycle, and then people are talking about you know a hundred thousand years. So to draw some comparisons between now and what was going on a hundred thousand years ago, is reminded uh, that people should should very well make. Well. Waspy, of course, was not channeled by Christopher Stephen Jacobs, but by John Newbro in 1881. And I want to turn to the book. There's 36 books in this volume, and I'm going to turn to Bond's Book of Praise. And you know, folks, if you're on the Internet, nowadays, you know, we don't have to have concordances when we make a deep study, all we have to do is type in the word OWASPI and then a subject like love or children, a Buddhism, any topic you'd like to hear what is within these thousand pages, you can find within 91 seconds on Google. And uh, so that's what I did uh, tonight. I... Uh, I typed in a Waspy Bonds Book of Praise E hyphen O because that's the that's the verses that I want to share with my audience. And you can follow along if you are in front of your computer or have your Awaspi in front of you. Um, you know this it, it is very similar to uh uh the book of Psalms in uh, the Holy Bible, and in, in the fact that this this book is full of praises to our Creator, like uh, Elias, oh, that I could sing the songs of thy heaven, thy sweet places of delight, Hanashi and Oshima, and Riviokim and Pathesis and Yanaris, to find earthward descriptive of their delightful holiness and rejoicing in the Almighty. Oh, that I could display their mountains and valleys and their wide plains, their shining waters and their forests and their stalactites and innumerable high arches, the thousands of millions of angels full of joy and loveliness, their wonderful music poured forth in thy praise, O Creator. Well, the section called E.O. Um, goes like this. I would have someone help me read it if they had it open. Oh, but I, I think to, yeah, <laughs> I can get mine, but it's kind of hard to read sometimes because it's a real old copy that I could. Um, Get it, perhaps, and maybe help. Well, them. that's all right. I shouldn't have sprung it on you. I'll go ahead and share. And you can yeah. add to it. Now, at your community, uh, didn't they read uh, a chapter of a waspy every evening about nine o'clock? Yes. Um, well, we had uh, two two councils each day, which was pretty amazing. One at noon and one at nine. So. Um, yeah, the, a passage from a waspy was, was read, and we'd go around, and each person would read a, a verse, you know, and then 
so we'd read a little, like a little a chapter or something like that. Right, time. and when I visited the Elois uh, in Massachusetts and met your uh, your father and and the others, uh, they were still doing this, and it it seemed like I mean that they had been that they had read Owaspi out loud together o- over forty times. Over the decades, yeah. Do you do you remember how many times they got through it? Oh, I don't closed? remember the, the exact number. I mean, four, that's a lot. Forty. I mean, maybe they started exactly before I was born. <laughs> but um, oh, I, I, the the album was uh, started about 1910, didn't they? Yeah, that's when um, Walter DeVoe started the group. In yeah, my dad joined in the 1930s. And uh-huh. my mother joined a little bit later, forty, forty, uh-huh. 40 or something like that. Oh, so your dad and mom met at the commune? Yeah, they did. They more or less met through the yeah through the group. Oh, that's lovely. That's oh. lovely. Well, here I'll do some reading. Then answered Jehovah the creator, to the songs of praise that rose up from his hundreds of thousands of millions to the sum of his mighty creation. Peace, my beloved, and great joy. Now, of course, uh, there are lots of goddesses as well as gods, and and, and, uh, so the universe is not male, but our language is conducive to the male pronouns. I answer you with millions of new creations, further than the furthest, boundless, thousands of millions of years are the works of my hand. Isn't that something? Thousands of millions of years. And I like the fact that a waspy puts things in a timeline. I, I, I know that we are all one and, and we're all kind of at one point. I, I mean, intellectually, I know that. But still, I love the grandeur of a waspy and 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 because everybody says you know that we're we're going to live throughout eternity and and uh i don't know uh that we're going to enjoy infinity and that our personality will survive uh, throughout eternity but growing up people didn't you know really give me an idea of of well, what do you do in eternity, and and you know what happens? And I just love finding a wasp and finding thousands of of ideas and clips, and you know, and clues about what we do throughout our eternity, and and and, and all of uh, the spaceships and the different kinds and the different missions, the scientific missions, the exploration missions, the entertainment missions, and and, and you know, going from one galaxy to another, sometimes taking our time. But then on business, you know, going through the wormholes. Of course, we didn't have the words wormhole when this was published in 1881. So we have to make adjustments for the for the language and and imagine imagine it. Reading further, I go not about turning water into wine like a magician or professing to raise the dead. But yet I raise the dead, the souls of the dead, into worlds shining, brilliant, full of loveliness. I take them not backward to toil and sorrow, but upward, onward to heavens of delight that perish not forever. Theo Waspy says that, you know, we don't need to get caught up in the uh, circle of reincarnation. And as Chris Jacobs has said, the time for reincarnation is is over, and that was more from the dark side. Um, yeah. yeah. Interesting uh, to have that perspective yeah, shared, because in my spiritual travels, I've run into so many teachings that probably everybody believes in reincarnation, and still does, and, and but, but it seems like there's a, there's a big, broader picture, even from, that embraces both the waspy and and all of that, you know, it's just a much bigger picture that that's um, unfolding to us in this 
great scenario that's been going on throughout the universe and our, our planet for so long. So Absolutely, yeah. Sunny. And, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, you know, as Christopher has shared, uh, uh, quoting the galactics that come to the Diamond Network, that uh, we are not supposed to see a tunnel of light when we pass over. But this was a trick of the cabal Mm -hmm. to catch us and trick us into believing that we had not successfully completed our lives here and that we needed to come back for toil and sorrow. (laughs) Uh, But that this has stopped. I mean, I think just in the last year that this this is what the Galactics have been saying, that uh, uh, they they stopped that... uh, that kind of thing, and and so, uh, you know, it's 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 exciting. It is exciting to to see that so much change and evolution is going on beyond you know what what we imagine has been going on here on planet Earth. And uh, yeah, I, I had a I played a song by Donovan on one of my shows called The Light. And it describes all. It describes that. It describes somebody who passed out of their body and and sees the light and sees all these great beings there. And and it gives me, gives me shivers to listen to it. And and then it speaks of the person uh, wanting to go back into the womb to experience another lifetime and to share the light. And it, even all that gave me shivers and and everything. So. I, it, it's just, I don't know. I mean, that's what what his truth was, and and beyond, because it's a lot of people's truth, and it still it still is very profound for me. You know, to that song. You know, that song really made an impression on me. So, anyways, since you brought up the light, the yes, I mean Donovan. Me. Donovan uh, was a great poet and singer, and yeah. and. Uh, yes, and, and he uh, uh, he touched my soul certainly oh, yeah. um, a long you know before I found the beautiful revelations of the Awaspi. I hope that folks will uh, you know look at Amazon about the Awaspis that are for sale there and uh, read some of the reviews and explanations. Uh, maybe go to Wikipedia, although uh, our uh, naysayers keep changing what what is said about a wasp be there. Um, it's just had so many great teachings, and 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 I would never have had the courage to have left Los Angeles and the cities. And uh, uh, you know, I I had an apartment in London and. And, and Montreal and, and San Francisco and and, and uh, but I but I uh, I understood that uh, you know through reading a wasp when you're when you're ready to raise your children when you're ready to to progress on your spiritual life you need to get out of the cities either temporarily or or permanently like like I was able to of course you know as I've been talking I I mean I uh this is my permanent home base and has been for decades here at Ozark Dawn Community, but uh, it doesn't mean I stay here all the time, just like I took the big trip to Washington, D.C., New York, Ellicott City uh, in July. So, it's you know, it's I think it's important to go around and, and see the uh, cre- uh, creator's creations. You know, I enjoyed the blue... Mountains. I enjoyed uh, uh, the Allegheny River and uh, the Delaware River. I dined on the Delaware River. Uh, so it, it, it's great to, to touch base with the cities and see some of the miraculous things like I did enjoying the UN. But uh, I, I enjoyed my Anastasia ritual this morning too here on my own land. So reading further, uh, the creator said, 
The dead are mine, the spirits of the dead, my young blossoms full of promise, speaking soul words for the glory of my heavens. For my quickened into life are mine, and I watch over them fatherly and in great wisdom. Nor suffer I them to go out of being forever. And I provide my heavenly places broad, boundless, so that the soul of man can never reach to the boundary thereof. Oh, that's gorgeous. I mean, it's so exciting, this boundless universe that we have to enjoy. And, and to know that we have a father that, you know, that cares for us and watches over us. Though they stray away for a season, yet have I provided them to return to me in the end. And, of course, this is what we're trying to do is to get the cabal members to return in the end. And I make them a banquet and provide unto them a feast, a home of love, with music and dancing, even on the threshold of wisdom. Weep not for the dead, O my beloved. I have places of delight for the righteous full of rejoicing and wonderful. And the soul of the dead entereth therein as one that emerges from a veil to shout with great joy for the provisions I have created, plentiful and brilliant. Sonny, won't that be wonderful that day? Oh, yes. Yes, that's so, um, it's so poetically described, you know, beautiful imagery and all. That's one of the most... uh, poetic books in Hawaii, you might say. The all this I, I mean, imagery I'm and all that. <laughs> yeah. yes. You know, the Diamond Network is all about joy. I, I mean, mm-hmm. we we know about the problems, uh, but we uh, we know about a lot of the solutions, but the main solution is, is experiencing the joy, raising these vibrations, and, and, and letting the raw tribe, the elephant tribe, the Syrians, letting them use the energy of that joy, you know, to uh, moderate and, 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 and take care of the problem. And, and so uh, when I'm encouraging people to study Awasi online or to get a physical copy, I really think Bond's Book of Phrase is a, praise, is, is a great book to reinforce this joy, you know, that we're talking about. And uh, each little mini, uh, each poem in this book, and, and there, there are over 20 of poems, uh, it's just a wonderful way to incorporate in your, you know, just like you said, you had your, your council meetings at your home altars. It's a community at noon and at 9 p.m. So the WASP encourages those that, that can to have ceremony morning, noon, at 6 p.m., and then and then at 9, 9 p.m. And um, when my kids were growing up, it was too hectic. And, of course, we were homeschooling them, home birthing them, uh, feeding them natural foods that we had grown when we could. Uh, and so a lot going on. And, and, and we didn't have quite as many other – we had wanted – a few other families to join us, OWASP families, and it, it didn't happen at that time. So there was an awful lot of work on on mine and my husband's, my dear husband's shoulders. And of course, this, these verses mean a lot to me, as I know how uh, you know he was he was sad to leave us so, so soon, but but also rejoicing in the heaven that that the Creator has provided for him and the hospitals there, you know, to heal him of his diseases. So uh, it's just a a wasp, for those who haven't read it, you know, it's got an awful lot of history, uh, kind of history, like, uh, uh, you know, 75,000 years ago, uh, kind of histories that uh, Christopher has shared on our shows and and, uh, the, the talking about the foundation of, of of each of the major religions and and uh, making prophecies for what will be happening um, during this 1,000-year uh, period here as we start the age of Cosmos, when we reunite with our cosmic brothers and sisters, when we no longer are a prison planet, and and we get to uh, you know hear regular news reports from the 
divine council or the council of worlds. And there's a book of of divinity in in the Awasti that's uh, that's that's interesting. So, uh, you know, reading the hundreds of pages in here of history, it's very interesting intellectually. But I but I also think that 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 uh, uh, the the other chapters that that are not historical that have the rituals, the charts, the uh, the diagrams and the bonds book of praise are are excellent for review or those that are first time into the Awaspi. Going on, the creator said, heaven after heaven have I created as a new surprise of great happiness to my sons and daughters in the way of my resurrection. Rejoice and be merry in holiness. Open your eyes, my beloved, and behold the works of my hands, which I provided to be yours forever. So reads in the reading from Owaski this evening. <laughs> you know, Sonny, we're looking up at the, the heavens a lot uh, uh, tonight and tomorrow night in North America. And... Uh, what can you tell us about what people might hope to see? Well, right now is the time of the Perseids meteor shower. And I believe, uh, yeah, it happens every year around this time. And it's usually recommended some somewhere in the wee hours. It's the best time to see it. But it's um, I haven't seen it yet myself, but I'm going to give it a try tonight. We have a lot of smoke in our air right now from wildfires, but you know it's not overwhelming, but it's it's there. But yes, um, this just happens every year, and it can be quite spectacular. You yes, I, I, it, it looked great last year when when I saw it. I I, I got up about four thirty in the morning to to see. Um, it, it's in the eastern eastern sky, and and. Uh, um, tonight, it's it's been going on for almost two weeks, and tonight mm-hmm. and tomorrow night will be the last two nights that we can see it from North America. And so I would encourage folks, before you go to bed, check it out. Mm-hmm. Look out the east, east of your homes, and, uh, and then uh, some of you might be getting up early or getting energetic and want to set the alarm and, and take a look at it. And it's just, you know, these meteors, the Earth is circling around every August, and 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 these meteors are uh, pieces of, from a uh, 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 planetary body that exploded a long, long time ago. So, so that's what the scientists are excited about, and and I think that. Uh, the, our galactic brothers and sisters are always looking for a chance to show themselves these days, you know, whether it's on the 4th of July or during these showers. So you might see something that looks a little different than the regular meteors. You might see something going uh, horizontal or, or cross-purposes to the regular meteors, and, and that could be a little weak from our Pleiadian friends, couldn't it? Yes, it could. <laughs> you just have to be observant in what we're looking at, and that's also the space station out there, which sometimes can be seen. We have people in our local area that conduct these sky uh, sessions and invite people out to, you know, they're more of a, on a scientific level. But, yes, yeah, sky watches, they call, they're called. Anyway, yeah, it, it's... Um, really awesome to contemplate the universe and how how extensive it is how much how much is out there I you know I've been so into music lately that when something is talked about I just think of some piece of music and I just thought about uh, John Denver's song Rocky Mountain High and I see it raining fire from the sky and I believe that was he was talking about the meteor shower at the time in that song. So anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> <something> <laughs> I, you know, I've been just 
so inspired by by music, you know, by this. Uh, and I that, and I love John Denver and oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah, and I love uh, his music and and uh, uh, um, it, 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 he was inspired. Uh, yeah. And he's gotten his reward. He's, he's in the heaven enjoying those beautiful yeah, uh, he places and heavenly music. <laughs> yeah, he is. I mean, he was so much into the earth, beauty of the earth and the wildlife and, you know, protecting the earth. And that was much to be admired about him, you know, that he it reminded me of my friend John Olmsted, you know, they because he that's what he was into. And uh, but then he also recognized the the heavens, you know, and the wonder of the heavens and the earth is all all one, of course. But you know, since we're living on the earth and you know nature is all around us and it's just part of the glory of creation, our planet Gaia. You know, it's just it's just wonderful to to be attuned to that and and to just see the the, the beauty. It's so inspiring. You know, and commune with the beauty of the earth. You know, so anyway, that was um, came to mind, and and then um, John Olmsted. You know, he he passed away in 2011, and uh, a couple of years before that, he got really interested in the song uh, "Across the Universe," and I, I actually by the Beatles. And I actually turned him on to it because you know he wasn't that listening to pop music that much in the in the sixties. But he you know he got he really latched on to that. And then at the time NASA was sending that song out around you know it was like it was they sent this song out and somehow they beamed it out across the universe. And I told him about that and he just latched on to it. And then of course he passed away a few few years later but I think he was he was having experiences of seeing things that were you know extraordinary you know behind his eyes you know he was he was opening up to certain cosmic consciousness you know so you know that that was just another example of a song and that song I love that song myself it's it's just a you know very special message as far as I can well, tell. Absolutely, absolutely, Sunny. So listen, yeah. uh, I had said that tonight's topic was going to uh, focus also on sun gazing. I, and I have heard of sun gazing and stargazing, and of course the sun is a star, um, for many years, but I, I did not understand until uh, this last week more about the ancient... Uh, Teachings and and the uh, health benefits and 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 the, the procedures to do sun gazing to in, improve one's um, brain and to increase one's pineal gland, connecting with spirit and in improving one's physical health. So uh, I wanted to share a little bit about this with um, my YouTube audience, and, and I, I've been hearing more from my fans. You know, I have a core of of, of uh, 100 who faithfully listen every week to the Candy Shop Show here on the Diamond Network, and I just want to give a shout-out to my YouTube friends. And uh, some of you have found me on Facebook. More of you would like to. I'm Candy Carroll, C A R R O L L, and uh, my picture has a yellow and 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 black jacket that I was wearing. Uh, that's on Facebook. If you'd like to join, and, and I want to say that um, if you want to friend me, try to send me a private message and say something from the show so that I know that you're really in my fan base. Recently I've had a few problems with uh, uh, some weirdos. Uh, I thought they were the same, my fans, but then they really weren't. So <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I'm, I'm happy to increase my, my fan base there on um, 
uh, Facebook and I give announcements about our guest speakers and things here. If people want to Google, you know, how to do sun sun gazing, uh, there is a a real uh, good show page that came up uh, and uh, I'm a little... uh, the website says how to sun gaze and it's technique two. Sun gazing is a one time practice of your lifetime, usually for a period of nine months. So you, you you only do it for nine months, folks. You can break up the practice in three phases zero to three months, three to six, and six to nine. You have to walk uh barefoot for forty five minutes for the rest of your life. If you want to keep the benefits going, <laughs> oh. well, and I I do a lot of uh, you know earthing. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to. Uh, we'll see how I feel. And and it says nine months, so I'm wondering if maybe they don't have to be consecutive three phases, just three phases. Um, I, I that's something to inquire about. The practice entails looking at the rising or setting sun one time per day only during the safe hours. Now, please remember the safe hours are any time within one hour window after sunrise or any time within the one hour window before sunset. Now, for example, it's so cool, you know, when I first heard of sun gazing, there wasn't an internet. There wasn't smartphones with uh, alarms and stuff like that, and so uh, and easy to Google when is the sunset and sunrise. But uh, of course, here in Missouri uh, today, the the sunrise was at, at six twenty eight and the sunset was at eight eighteen, and um, I uh, I timed myself uh, counting ten seconds with the timer on my phone, and sure enough, count, counting 10 at that speed I happened to pick was exactly 10 seconds. Okay. Um, the first day that you sun gaze, during the safe hours, sun gaze for a maximum of 10 seconds. Second day, sun gaze for 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. And add 10 seconds every succeeding day. So at the end of 10 continuous days of sun gazing, you will be looking at the sun for 100 seconds, which is also one minute and 40 seconds, of course. So I um, I tried to start this a few days ago, but it's been very cloudy, and I didn't feel like I was getting the full effect. And... Uh, I've done it at sunrise and I've done it at sunset. Sometimes I have to get out on the highway. And and uh, la- last night I I pulled over on the shoulder of the highway so that I could get a clear view of the sun. For a lot of people, it's hard with trees and city buildings or something to actually see the sunset or see the sunrise. Uh, but I encourage people that that this to uh, is worth trying and and worth trying to find where you can get a good view of of either or both. Now, when you do this, you stand on barefoot, ideally. Uh, Eyes can blink and or flicker. Now, that's important. If Hmm. you can blink your eyes during the 10 seconds, stillness or steadiness of the eyes is not required. Do not wear any contact lenses or glasses while you're sun gazing. When you reach three months, you will have gazed at the sun 15 minutes at a stretch. The sun energy or the sun rays passing through the human eye are charging the hypothalamus tract, which is the pathway behind the retina leading to the human brain. This is the first phase of the method and lasts around three months. Next, physical diseases will start being cured right after you've completed 15 minutes of sun gazing. 70 to 80% of the energy synthesized from food is taken by the brain and is used up in fueling tensions and worries. Wow, I didn't know that before this week. You know, 80% 
of the food we use is just wasted because we've got so much tension and worries, the average person. Huh. It's a lack of, you know, and, and like my daughter was over here this week, and she says, Mom, you sure don't eat very much. Well, <laughs> uh-huh. I, don't, I don't have as many tensions as worries after listening to Elizabeth and getting happy on the joy. <laughs> so our food, 80%, you're saying our 80% of our food is wasted because of having tension and worries? Is that what yes. it says? Yes. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> well, <laughs> something to try. <laughs> we've got to kind of get in the joyful flow of life, I guess, more. <laughs> but anyway, yes. that's, that's an interesting thing to contemplate. I mean, right now where I am, the sun is it's um, 722, and I can look out my window and see the sun behind the trees. Uh, it's still a bit intense to to look right at it, but it's um it's getting close to that hour before sunset. In fact, it is in that hour right now, actually. Right, right. the magic hour, as they call it. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's a, it's a wonderful. It's there's something about that that time of day. It is magical, you know. Just from a visual point of view, you know, the light, the way the lighting hits everything. And uh, it's uh, one of my favorites because I'm not up at dawn that much, but, but you know, it's around sunset, I've noticed, you know, that I've done my share of photography and, and it's known as the magic hour. And just the way the light, the light hits everything. It can just create a lot of beauty. The... Uh... The, the sunsets are so gorgeous here, and I just I continue to just marvel. Uh, now, in in the last five days, we've had two that have just been stupendous. Oh, um, you know, a little bit of clouds, and then the light. Yeah, like a little bit of clouds. Uh, just, just out of this world. But reading on a little bit here. Uh, and this is written by a gentleman who who di- who did this practice and who is experiencing this. And he says, uh, "But I want to say, you know, there's a lot of elderly people who who don't have much of an appetite, and everybody's all the time getting excited about that and worried. And well, you know, maybe elderly care." Per- People have sometimes given up their worries and their tensions, and so they don't need more food. <laughs> That's just what I thought of when I was reading this. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I fast, and and, and for when, when when you're sick, you're supposed to fast. It's like animal yeah. food, and and and, and uh, because your body needs to conserve the energy to heal uh-huh. you, and not use energy to digest this food. So. I usually hear about yeah. people, you know, not eating. Well, our with the lack of, yeah, our bodies tell us usually, yeah. With, with the lack of mental tension, brain does not require the same amount of energy before. As you proceed in sun gazing, as your tensions decrease, the need for food intake will go down. When you reach thirty minutes duration of continuously sun gazing, you will fully be liberated from physical disease. Since by then, all the colors of the sun will have reached the brain through the eye. And so we're we're being nourished by this energy of the sun. Mm-hmm. And I think this is so cool to put this in context with the fact that, uh, you know, Christopher has said that we uh, are going into 5D and that the 5D entities live in our sun. And by the way, I want to re- recommend people not only to listen to Benjamin Fulford, but Ben Ben Davidson with Suspicious Observers. And and I think listening to him this week is important. And he says, you know, Delta Airlines uh, went down because of a solar flare. And he says the solar flares are going to be, you know, worse at the end of this week. And I think uh, uh, it might be uh, comforting to to listen to him. 
Suspicious Observers comes on for four minutes each morning on, on YouTube. Okay. Eyes receive the entire spectrum of the sunlight while sun rays, which is distributed to the different parts of the body by the brain on a need per base. As a result, you're cured from all diseases. Well, that's quite a statement. <laughs> I'll have to look that up myself. And get, <laughs> I've heard that from many quarters, but still, I believe that the sun is very healing. But we we can't overdo it, especially during the, the peak hours. But uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> sun is. Right, I mean, uh, uh, I believe that the Creator wanted us to have perfect physical health, um, and and, and he provides some means. Now, different people are debating, and of course, the cabal wanted to make us all sick, kill us all, just, you know, horrible there, and, you know, everybody is so sick. I mean, before, you, hardly anybody was ever sick before they were 30, 40, or 50, and now it's like everybody's sick. I mean, Mm -hmm. the only... And they're all the time talking about children's cancer. The only children that were ever sick in, in the fifties was just a couple people who had epileptic fits, a couple who had uh, sugar diabetes, and one or two once in a while that might have uh, leukemia. There, there, but there wasn't such a thing as children's cancer, <laughs> and, mm. and all these other diseases that children and teenagers and you know, no. and women having breast cancer in their 20s and, and, yes. and down babies. It's just sad what the cabal yeah. does. It, it's been, it's been, you know, we have different diseases and, and younger and all that. I do remember the polio epidemic in the, in the 50s, and that was, um, but, uh, they, they're always giving us their, all those images of the children in the iron lungs and that kind of thing. But then they, my parents didn't believe in vaccinations. I mean, you know, and, and that, so they didn't, they didn't get me to have the polio vaccine. I never had polio, fortunately. But um, anyway, yeah, it's 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 all changing. You know, there's so many relative things. You know, relative. And of course, your parents didn't believe in vaccinations, not because they saw the documentary that they caused autism but because they read a waspy. And that's just one of the many yeah. things that, you know, I, I did not vaccinate my children in the 80s and, uh, because I had read the waspy and knew, you know, how dangerous it was. Uh, and so uh, now we have the proof in, in, the, in, in these uh, autistic uh, reports and, and, uh, and documentaries that are very important, apparently, you know, to watch. Well, uh, I I think I want to go ahead and and share some more of this. Uh, let's see. Uh, you are your own master within six months of your uh, of your body. And uh, when you do all of this sun gazing, uh, your storage level increases in your body. After six months of sun gazing, now this is the third phase, you will start to have the original form of micro food, which is our sun. Additionally, this can avoid the toxic waste that you take into your body while you eat regular food. You see, folks, I was turned on to this by a friend who told me that uh, that he didn't really eat, that he got his nutrition from sun gazing and supplements and, and, and from taking in what needed to be taken in to make uh, our proteins and our vitamins and minerals that he needed. For example, he said that he drinks a, a cup of black coffee in the morning with coconut oil and butter. And and so I've been trying it, and, and he says that this combination of the oil and the butter heated by the by the hot coffee is just what the body needs to to make a lot of minerals and, and vitamins. 
uh, I haven't gone into the details of, of, of that, but but uh, he looks so healthy. And, and uh, so I, you know, I tried that, and I, I've been enjoying uh, mm-hmm. drinking my coconut oil in the mornings. Uh, but here again, you know, sun gazing is, is going to help us uh, decrease our, our food intake. So uh, at seven and a half months, people would be sun gazing for 35 minutes, and that's when hunger starts going down a great deal. So that's after seven and a half months. The need for food intake decreases. No one needs to eat more than his or her hunger level. Hunger comes because of energy requirements of the body, which is a must for its existence. If you are hungry, you should eat, you know, on on a regular basis, unless you're doing a special fast. Food is not a necessity for the body to function. Only energy is. Conventionally, you are indirectly getting the sun energy while eating, which is a byproduct of sun energy. Remember, if there's no sunlight, no food will grow. Mm, Absolutely. You definitely need the sunlight. Yeah, unless you're growing mushrooms underground or something. (laughs) But yeah, yeah, I mean, this definitely is part of photosynthesis. Yeah, makes it makes everything green and come alive. Therefore, as you consume the original form of food by sun gazing. Hunger goes down, starting to disappear eventually. By eight months, you should see hunger almost gone. For a dull or weak student or with no belief, this time period may be nine months or 45 minutes. After that time, so the person who really believes, you you, you won't get hungry after eight months. But for the, the, the doubters, it might take nine months or 44 minutes of looking at the sun. After that time, hunger disappears forever. Hmm. All mechanisms associated with hunger, like aroma, cravings, and hunger pains, also disappear, according to this author. Moreover, energy levels are at a higher level. There is a judgment, having had this experience personally, that the brain is well activated with the sun energy. After the month of when you reach a 45 minutes level, you should give up sun gazing since solar science prohibits further gazing for the sake of eye care. The body will get discharged when you stop practicing, which has to be recharged. Now you have to start walking on bare foot on bare earth for 45 minutes daily for a total of six days. Relaxed walking only. You know, that's what I thought. His first paragraph was written badly because, you know, who wants to walk outside for 45 minutes a day for the rest of their life? No, that's not what he meant. He said just for six days. So here you are. You do this sun gazing for nine months, and then you stop. Mm. And 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 when you stop, the body will get discharged, and that has to be recharged. And you can recharge by the sun falling on your whole body and you doing the earthing with your bare feet. Now do relaxed walking only. No need to walk briskly, jog, jog, or run. Any convenient time of day is all right. However, it is preferred to do that when the earth is warmer and the sunlight is falling on your body. So my question here is, well, okay, so if you can stop at the end of each phase and restart it, you know, then you might want to stop and wait so that uh, it is spring when the nine months is over. (laughs) You don't want to walk for six days outside in the snow. Oh, yeah, well, right, if if it's winter, (laughs) you wouldn't be wanting to do that. I mean, if it's if it's in a cold climate, like where there's snow and ice and everything. Because I've been 
traveling so much, Sonny. I, I think I, I just I just get in my car and drive to Texas or someplace where it is warm. <laughs> mm-hmm. it is yeah, holiday. Holiday. yeah. <laughs> yeah when you walk barefoot, yeah, an important gland in the brain center called the pineal gland or the third eye is activated. We've talked about that a lot on our shows in the past, how to do that and the importance of doing that. The big toe of the foot represents this gland. 25 years ago, it was considered a useless gland. Now it has become an important gland for study. And up to now, about 18,000 professional papers have been published about the pineal gland. It has always been known as the seat of the soul. The pineal gland has optic nerve endings. The remaining four toes represent glands, too. The pituitary, the hypothalamus, the thalamus, and the amygdala. The amygdala, for the last two years, has been... Uh, gaining in uh, importance. Um, your body weight will will drop, uh, and the sun's crown of falling on the head or the crown uh, chakra is very important. Actually, according to this author, the chakras are not in the spinal cord. That mm. is an imaginary location. They are definitely all in the brain. Well, aren't they in the etheric body, etheric and astral body? And they're not. Uh, they're, the chakras aren't physical anyway, from what I understand. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Uh, they're not uh, part of funny. the physical body. Yeah. Yeah. All these create a magnetic field, and the body brain recharges with the energy of the sun entering in you. Relax. Walk 45 minutes for one year, and food continues to be away from you. After one year of recharging, if you are satisfied with your progress, you can give up barefoot walking. A few minutes of sun energy falling on you once in three to four days will be enough from then on. Well, this seems to be contradictory because before he said six days and now he's saying one year. Uh, I guess he says if you don't want to eat, you need to do it for one year. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't mind doing some eating, especially if I like, I like to eat. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want to give it up altogether, <laughs> but it's nice to end you're saying about losing weight. Now, now, if one is not eating, doesn't one lose too much weight and you know, get to like, a, I've already lost too much weight. <laughs> no. Oh. I mean, I, I, anyway, I, I understand. Maybe, maybe you gain more weight, Sunny. Uh, a few minutes of sun energy falling on you once in three to four days will be enough from then on. Mm-hmm. Isn't that interesting? A few minutes. Yeah. But if you want the immune system to strengthen, then keep on the barefoot walking. Also, if you want memory power or intelligence to increase, continue walking in the sun. As you increase the sun's heat on your feet, the brain, as you increase the sun's heat on your feet, the brain will activate more and more, which will result in the more activity of the pineal gland. Okay. Well, that is the end of the article, but I will share, folks, that uh, I'm incorporating the sun gazing in my my morning Anastasia ritual, and uh, but my intuition tells me, you know, this is from very ancient times, long ago, and actually, the universe is in a different place. The sun is different. The sun is white, bright now, rather than yellow. And my intuition said that actually there isn't a, two safe hours a day anymore. There's uh, two 30-minute periods that are safe. And I, I really uh, uh, want to caution my listeners that uh, even though this article says that, you know, if the sun rises at 625, you can do this at, 620, at 720, 
I don't think you can face it. I mm-hmm. think the sun today in 2016 is too bright to do this safely, and I think that you should do it in the first 30 minutes. So if it's sunrise 6:25, then do your do your activity, uh, you know, like at 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 6:45, uh, not at not at seven o'clock. I would agree with that. I mean, I'm sitting out here right now, and the sun is setting, and this is the perfect time for me because it's a uh, it's it's very close to the horizon right now, even though there's smoke out there. It's quite well, orange. Well, Sunny, why don't you sun gaze right now? Uh, take your glasses off if you have any. Yeah. And, and I don't know if you can slip your shoes off, but at least take your glasses off and, and uh, let's count it, okay? I was doing it. I was doing it before when you were talking and reading, but now it's a little bit behind the trees, but I will... You know, it's easier to look at, and it's so behind the trees there. I can move my chair so I can. Well, they don't want you to do it more than 10 seconds. Yeah, I did do it for 10 seconds before when it was, you know, a little bit just about five minutes ago. Oh, okay. And how do you feel? Mm, Well, there's definitely an an energy that came in. You know, I I am... uh, Definitely, uh, you know, feeling, I mean, an, an energy from the sun. So, you know, along with everything else that my body's experiencing, I I did, uh, I did, it's, 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 a, it's a connection, you know, it feels like it's making a connection with a heavenly entity out there, you know, the right. father, the <laughs> father, the son, you know. <laughs> But I always get sun on my body, you know, other times of the day. I don't stare at it, but I, that I, um, when I can, you know, I get sun on my body, you know, because it, it really does feel good and right to do that, you know, because our bodies. Well, uh, you, you know, this this author, now, now I've watched some videotapes yesterday, like this guy, uh, he, uh, He's an African American, and and he he sun gazes for three hours a day. Whoa! <laughs> well, that's and that must be when the sun is pretty bright too. So yeah, it must have taken him a while to build up to that. I don't understand. Uh, I I don't understand the purpose. Uh, I and and I I feel that. Uh, uh, you know, I, I I wonder. Life should be full of balance. Mm-hmm. Your, you know, your spiritual life, your service to others, taking care of yourself. Uh, uh, it, everything should be in balance and harmony. And I think if you're sun gazing for three hours a day, even if it's physically safe, I'm wondering if perhaps your life is a little bit out of balance. Yeah, people do go to extremes with sometimes, you know, certain uh, practices and whatever they might be doing. And so, yeah, I agree that that balance is is the key. I mean, I'm not going to suddenly say I've got to do this every day, and and then it doesn't become joyful after. You know, if you're, it's like a a discipline, but it's not a, a joyful, flowing experience. I would say if I'm making myself do something that may not be, you know, may be uncomfortable. You know, it may be, you know, like, anyway, anyway, if if I feel the inspiration and I'm looking at the sun is setting and it's beautiful and I'm looking up there at the sun and and just absorbing its its energy. Right, and I I don't want my listeners to think, uh, you know, oh, my God, I've got to do this for nine months and this and that. Yeah, you only have to do it for a little more than three months, and he says that all diseases will disappear. Well, that's, I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> I'd like, but, yeah. And, yeah, and your pineal gland will grow. You'll become more uh, attuned to the creator and, and you know, your your telepathy, your, uh, your hearing and sight, uh, second sight will be increased and all those things. And that's wonderful. 
I mean, we don't need to go four months. We don't need to have mm-hmm. more intelligence and 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 and, and stop eating. Uh, so you know, uh, right now I'm I'm really curious to, uh, you know, to because for me I I need to lose some weight and and, and I, I want to open my Camille glands some more and and so. Um, so I, I'm going to try for three and a half months, and, and I'll be talking about this once in a while in the candy jar treats. And, and Sunny, let me know, uh, you know, privately if you don't want to on air, uh, you know, uh, what you're thinking about. And, and the, the folks on YouTube, uh, if you decide to give this a try, I'd love to have some feedback to you. You know, my my email is um, awaspy. 2002 at yahoo.com and that's O-A-H-S-C-E 2002 at yahoo.com and that's another way that you can find me on Facebook uh, by uh, uh, putting in that that email. Well, um, listen folks, I uh, uh was happy to share with you something new that I am excited about. On my last show, I was trying to to talk a little bit about current events. And I want to remind folks that when I went up to St. Louis and went to those UFO meetings where Ray Kosselvich was talking about what the elephant people and the circle graves and, 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 and the others were sharing, and encouraging us all to have 30 days worth of food on hand uh, because things might get a little disruptive as we're making these changes. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, that that has been the recommendation for uh, several years from many of the ETs that for each person that you think you might be... uh, staying with, you should have 30 days' supply of food on hand. And as we know, there's been fires and flooding and and all kinds of disruptions. And just like with the Delta flight, things are happening out there that could cause delays in food deliveries to our stores or make it impossible for you to get out and get to a store. So I would really think that I don't want to say anything that would cause fearfulness. I just want you guys to be prudent, have your life insurance policy, having your 30-day supply of food and water on hand. And that's what I I wanted to recommend about that. Um, Don't worry about it. And, you know, if you can't get it all done, okay. But uh, uh Maybe Sundays and you won't need 30, as much as 30 days worth of food might not be very much if you've been sun gazing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, well, listen, uh, did you have any uh, quick comments here uh, on, on those topics or something else, uh, Sunny? Oh, um, see, well, I'm, I've been giving some feedback all along, but. Yeah, uh, it's there's so many teachings out there. I I'd say, you know, I you know, I just the the net the natural beauty that's out there and our heavenly uh, orbs, <laughs> you know, that it's going to bless us if we if we tune into them, if we look at them, absorb their energy. Um, but something that threw me off a little was when Chris. Uh, talked about the the moon being artificial. You know that you know the moon. You know the moon has been like the goddess. And um, I don't know if this is off track a little bit from what you were talking about, but you know that it's just been the moon has been special to. You know it's the, like the goddess energy, the feminine energy, and the sun's been the more the masculine energy. And I still, like the moon, you know, when the moon is full, it still has a very powerful energy, you know, and a wonderful energy to absorb. 
whether it's artificial or not. It, it doesn't feel artificial to me. I mean, it, it still holds that energy. And, of course, our dear Earth <laughs> is, you know, be close to the Earth, you know, and so, and the trees and, you know, and being, leaning up against the trees and, and just the, you know, the, when I go out for a walk, and in fact, I need to do this pretty soon, when I go out to feed my feral kitty, I take a little walk, and now my landline's ringing, but I can't answer it right now. Um, I take a little walk, and then there's a tree that I that I say hi to, <laughs> and touch and put my arms around sometimes. And uh, in any case, my landline's ringing, and you probably hear it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well. Uh... And I do that, and, and I hug my tree, and I say, I love you, and I say, yeah. we are all one, and this means that all the trees on my five acres, uh, uh, you know, I'm sure I have over 100 trees, uh, means I love you all. <laughs> yeah, I know. I tell them I love them, too. I always tell them I love them, you know. It feels good to have uh, an entity to say I love you, Uh yeah, and I tell my it's cats just, I and love you them. You and I are a couple of single ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and and there's a lot of critters out there, you know, and I I just um, say hi to them. There's, there's a, there was an unusual critter around. It looked like a raccoon, but it didn't have a raccoon tra- tail. It had like a raccoon face with a mask and everything. And then I saw it, I see it when I go out right around this time to feed my feral kitty. And it's down by the irrigation ditch, and and then now they had some babies, you know, they're like four little babies, and and I, it looks like a raccoon, but it didn't have the raccoon tail. So I was really curious about what <laughs> what kind right. of creature that was, you know. All the amazing creatures that yeah has been made. I planted my fall garden today uh, a little early because people are predicting uh, that that uh, winter will come s- much sooner, that, that there won't be hardly any fall at all. So, mm. uh, uh, so I've planted it a week early, and we'll we'll see what will result. I'll probably share that in the, the candy jar treats. Uh, but, but listen, I want to finish up with something that I was trying to do on Monday night. Next week, uh, our guest speakers uh, are scheduled to be... Uh, Mark Sorensen uh, and and Hildegard from Canada, so that will be uh, a, 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 another interesting thing. And I I really love hearing them talk in the Pleiadian. And uh, I and and another one of uh, the, the the Diamond Network friends, we we started just pretending like we were talking Pleiadian, and and, and that was so much fun. I mean, I would just I would just say these wild syllables that came out, and, and they would say wild syllables that came out, and it, pretty soon it began, it, 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 it kind of sounded and felt like, you know, that we were channeling uh, ETs, just like uh, Hildegard does, so, and Mark, so anyway, it'll be a good show. What I wanted to end with is with, it was the same topic as I got cut off electronically last time, and and if I get cut off tonight, uh, anyway, I, I, I hope that people will uh, go to the YouTube. And, of course, I'm talking about Benjamin Fulford's update for August 8, 2016. It was most unusual, really important. And I'm, I'm going to play this, and, and, then, and, and I think we'll just uh, kind of end it here. And, and if, if folks want to listen right now, great. Uh, but I want to thank you, uh, my listening audience, and I want to thank you, Sunny, for helping me this evening. Well, it's a pleasure, Candy. <laughs> yeah. Pleasure All right. to, be, to be a part of your show. And, yeah, and and everybody next join me next Tuesday on Voices of the Alternative World, and our topic will be music, sharing the joys of music and the 
deeper significance of some a lot of the music that's been around for during our lifetimes. So yes. Well that's right. And and you can listen on YouTube uh right there on the Diamonds Forever channel to funny shows. It's right next to the candy yeah. shop show. Right. Voices of the alternative world it's called. And there's quite a few of them up there. But like we had Belden Gelfon uh was it yeah, the, yesterday was Tuesday and he was my friend from the One World Family Commune that I've known for forty five years or so, talking about domes, Bucky Fuller, architecture, you know, this new world vision, communal vision and all that. So that show is if it's not up now it'll be up soon on uh, on YouTube. Thank you so much, Sonny. Yeah. Here's Benjamin Bolter. George Bush Sr. went fishing with Vladimir Putin in 2007. He invited Putin to join a plot to destroy China. The scenario Bush painted was for the U.S. and Russia to start a new Cold War. This would give Russia, the U.S., Europe, and Japan an excuse to rearm. During this Cold War, Russia would pretend to be China's friend. However, In the end, NATO, Russia, Japan, and Korea would all attack China and divide it into six countries so that China would never rise to be a threat to Western power. The official was also told that Clinton was part of the Bush Nazi Mafia, so whatever promises she was making were only to buy time and get money from the Chinese so that they could carry out this plan. As a result of this conversation, the Chinese official agreed China should not support Clinton. The other thing the Hazarians did was to the Emperor of Japan to announce his resignation on August 8th, an auspicious day for China. The Chinese were told this was to get Crown Prince Naruhito on the throne so he could help with the plan to unite Japan with China. Naruhito is married to Masako Awada, who is the daughter of Rockefeller's Slate and World Court Judge Hisashi Awada. Again, the Chinese were told this was just a Hazarian attempt to bribe China by offering to hand over their puppet government in Japan. Furthermore, the imperial family would never willingly accede to such a plan, and so it was just a Hazarian lie. The emperor is resigning because of poor health and because he does not want to get involved in the ongoing fight over the gold bunkers in Japan. In conclusion... The WDs explained very clearly to the Chinese this was a Hazarian trick designed to fool the Chinese into war with the U.S. The WDs WDs and the Chinese also discussed the future of the U.S. dollar and the global financial system. White Dragon Society. The Chinese delegate said China's plan was to replace the U.S. dollar with Bitcoin. He said the recent hacking of Bitcoin was a setback to this plan, but that a new generation Chinese supercomputers would be powerful enough to keep Bitcoin secure. The WDs told the Chinese a more viable plan was for China to make a big move to take over the existing international U.S. dollar infrastructure and have the United States issue a separate new currency of its own. Pentagon sources, for their part, Confirm U.S. Treasury Secretary Jack Lew is pushing for the launch of a gold-backed international currency to replace the U.S. dollar as well as a new currency for the United States as a part of a revamp of the international financial system. The conditions are ripe and the Chinese could successfully pull this off, in tandem with U.S. military and agency White Hats, by offering to trade all U.S. dollars based on real-world transactions not derivatives and related financial fraud, or a new currency within a two- or three-month window of opportunity. The Chinese military and Asian royal families are ready to offer gold to back this move. At the most only about 20, mostly small slave states, of the world's 200 or so countries would refuse to go along with such a plan, they were told. This is something the Chinese leadership will be discussing at their summer retreat this month. The White Dragon Society was also contacted last week by representatives of the South American drug cartels who said they wanted help in laundering their drug money now that they could no longer go through the Bush-slash-Nazi branch of the CIA. The Chinese military is looking to see if they can help do this if it will help take down the Bush-slash-Clinton crime family, according to Chinese government agents in Japan. The WDs, for its part, said the answer was to legalize and regulate the drug business. 
Another interesting thing revealed by the Chinese representative was that they now abandoned plan to put Hillary Clinton in power was part of a plan to place female leaders in power in a variety of countries because female leaders would be more compliant to Chinese rule. For this reason, he said, a decision has already been finalized to replace Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe with the female politician Renyo Murata, who has Chinese blood. Renyo would be just a puppet, he said. In any case, the ongoing Hazarian Mafia attempt to hand Japan over to China has led to strong infighting inside the Japanese power structure with the religious, Shinto, Buddhist, and Christian establishment fighting against the Hazarian bribed politicians. As a part of this struggle, forces opposed to the Shinzo Abe regime successfully managed to place their candidate, Yuriko Koik, as mayor of Tokyo. This gives them control over police forces operating in the capital city and thus the ability to start rounding up thugs working for the Hazarian Mafia, the sources say. This infighting is a mirror of the serious power struggle taking place in the United States. When U.S. top General Joseph Dunford went to Turkey on July 31st, he was told in no uncertain terms by the Turks that it was people operating inside the U.S. who were behind most of the world's terrorism. The Turks said they would only renew cooperation with the U.S. military if something was done about this. Dunford responded by publicly calling on August 1st for the U.S. military to be apolitical and nonpartisan but to honor its oath to defend the Constitution. Pentagon sources say this is code for the military to move to remove Hillary Clinton. Former head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Martin Dempsey made a similar call in an opinion piece published in the Washington Post on July 30th, the Pentagon sources noted. Furthermore, the sources say, Obama was summoned to the Department of Defense on August 4th where he was told the U.S. military would be opposing not only ISIS but all false flags, attempts to assassinate Donald Trump, vote fraud, race wars, food riots as well as any other efforts to stop the presidential election or impose martial law. CIA sources for their part are warning there will be an attempt soon to use some sort of scalar weapon to kill thousands of people in Alton Taft. Georgia sometime in either August or September to try to get the November presidential election called off. Calling of the election would be a prelude to a world war aimed at saving the Hazarian power structure. In yet another sign events are spinning out of control, First Nations sources in British Columbia, Canada, say they shot down an armed U.S. drone last week operating illegally inside Canada. The Chinese, for their part, were given a fresh reminder of Hazarian genocidal plans last week when they shot down an unmarked plane that was spraying chemtrails along the Chinese border with Kazakhstan, according to CIA agents in Asia. The plane was piloted by Bush CIA agents and was filled with containers of bioengineered swine flu, they said. We are also getting reports from Indonesia and elsewhere of thousands of people mysteriously dropping dead a sure sign of a renewed attempt by the Hazarians to use bioweapons to reduce the world's population to levels they can control. What all these events show is that the world is in for some turbulent times as we watch the desperate struggles of the dying Hazarian beast. If we fight hard and relentlessly, we can finally defeat these monsters as early as this autumn. Getting Donald Trump in power in the U.S. will be a huge key to victory. The impending fall of the House of Saud will be another. However, preventing world war from starting in the South China Sea and elsewhere will be just as important. Finally, in a notice to readers, your correspondent will be in Canada for his annual holiday starting this week so the next few reports will be pre-written, unless something very big happens.
Are you looking for healing or a change in your life to help you enjoy it more fully? You might benefit from a galactic energy reading and clearing from Chris Jacobs. Chris will work with you on a soul level to clear unseen negative influences, implants, programs, contracts, and energetic blocks. Chris Jacobs is a gifted energy healer. Contact him today at ChristopherStephenJacobs at gmail.com.